Welcome back, Hubians. I am live. My name is Gary Beekler. I am from nerdrotic.com, and I am here to recap Doctor Who Season 10, Episode 8 already, The Lie of the Land by Toby Whitehouse, directed by Wayne Yip. As you can see, I am by myself. My co-host, John Reed, is on assignment. So in the spirit of continuity, I want to continue these. Uh, we've been late for the last couple of videos. I do apologize. We will be on time, at least for the last two. We're actually going to be early for those. So the last two episodes, we will be on at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday. This is also the Cult of Frisco podcast, which is like a sister podcast to the Nerdrotic podcast. And uh, basically, I don't like doing these things alone, but I'm going to do this one because I just love Doctor Who. And I really did like, I don't know if I love, but I really did like this three episode arc. We didn't know we were going to get a three episode arc. Stephen Moffat had referenced earlier in the year that we weren't going to get a bunch of two parters maybe at the end of the year. So this was a bit of a surprise and we had a pretty decent bad guy. I kind of wish they were more developed uh, in the monks, but I think there's more to them than meets the eye. This episode uh, includes the monks, Doctor Who, Bill, Nardole, and we get Missy again, who just eats up every moment on the screen, and we will get to her in a second. I'm just going to briefly recap the episode here, and I will be looking down at my notes a lot, so I do apologize. Usually I edit these and put them out a little later. Don't have time to do this, so you're just going to have to watch me stumble through this, and uh, you know, there's nothing uh, for humility's sake than uh, watching yourself stumble live on the World Wide Web. It's awesome. So, here we go. Uh, the, uh, the doctor gives an Attenborough-esque overture. He's kind of big brother, and he's talking about uh, the monks are the benevolent wonders of the world and uh, injecting themselves into our history, and they've been the reason we went to the moon and invented the telephone. Uh, it, this is... Uh, you know, basically a propaganda scene. We're getting the 1984 vibe. The other vibe I'm getting from the beginning of this is uh, a Sound of Drums vibe from season three. So we see Bill in her 1984, you know, dark sweater uniform and uh, the, you know, just the picture of oppression. And she's at home uh, having some tea and trying to summon her imaginary mom, which is a decent reference. It kind of explains why she screamed for her mom back in oxygen so this is like a real thing for her kind of her imaginary friend and it must be fairly recent because she said she hadn't had a bunch of pictures and the doctor went back in time got some pictures for her so this must be uh you know just a really developed imaginary friend which is cool but again there might be something more to that than meets the eye i hope there is i will give you my theory a little later uh so as she's as Bill is talking to her mom, uh, Nardo breaks into her house and she's surprised to see him. And obviously he survived his lung infection or whatever he got from the last episode. And we're all dealing with the ramifications of Bill's decision to cure the doctor's blindness by allowing the monks to take over our world. They needed somebody who to invite them in and it had to be of, you know, a, 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 of they, they needed consent, but not just consent out of fear. They needed it out of love. They needed to be loved like we all do. So uh, Nardal returns. And uh, since the last episode, we find out it's been a few weeks and Nardal in that time has been trying to figure out where the doctor is. We find out that the doctor is on a ship off the coast of Scotland. And that's where he's shooting all these uh, videos. And they pretty quickly devise a plan and shoot out to uh, that ship. And uh, the reason they use is uh, one of the captain's sons is in the truth prison. Or he got arrested by the truth police for having a box of comics. Damn them for hating comics. But uh, there was also a quick scene in the beginning of uh, a, a family getting raided by the truth police because the mom realizes that the monks have only been there for a few months. So we're getting this picture that they're injecting stuff into our minds, like a broadcast of some kind, changing history, and it's not completely taking. And that's why Bill has been summoning her mom to kind of keep her tethered to reality. So we see the mom get taken away. And again, that was a real throwback for me to the sound of drums when uh, the master was the prime minister. And there's a lot of callbacks, uh, visual 
and musical call callbacks. Uh, one of the ones, I don't know if you caught while they were doing the uh, monk uh, montage, they were showing the monks executing some people, benevolently, of course, and it was a bunch of people standing in front of a, a electronic shop, and it was Magpie Electrical from the Idiot's Lantern, which was very cool. Right? Nice little reference there. And again, that was from the 50s, and that's kind of, they're just going for this, uh, you know, uh, late uh, 20th century British look, uh, along with the 1984 thing, which was really cool aesthetic. So Bill and Nardal find the doctor, and he's uh, inside a ship in an office uh, shooting videos with uh, notes all around him, which is not unlike what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, just telling, basically being Big Brother, telling everybody to listen to the monks and if you, you know, report your neighbor and all that kind of stuff. And um, Bill confronts the doctor and she thinks it's some kind of a plan he's pulling. It's like, oh, you're just faking, right? And the doctor's all, nope, I'm not faking. I'm with the monks. And we get a pretty good uh, dramatic scene but from Pearl Mackey, uh, basically just being heartbroken that the doctor has sided with the monks. But the doctor gives a really good argument uh, of why somebody maybe should take us over. He talks about, you know, fascism and racism uh, there, and fundamentalism. Uh, it was a, I thought it was a pretty decent argument, but then she brings up free will, which he had just given her an assignment for a 3,000 word essay right before the monks invaded. So she kind of knows he's full of it, but he says no. And uh, we get, uh, you know, and I know companions have tried to kill the doctor before, but this like escalated really fast. She, uh, you know, Bill is heartbroken and there's a bunch of guards with guns pointing at her and she grabs one of their pistols and shoots the doctor. Uh, pretty shocking, but this is where we get our uh, spoiler warning, by the way. I'm assuming you've all watched the episode. We get our big tease regeneration scene. And I, you know, I think they just kind of, put this in so it could go in the trailer. You know, we know the doctor is going to be re regenerating lately, later on in the season, but uh, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of tease regeneration scenes. It did work. It was all a ruse on bill uh, devised by Nardal to see if she was under the influence of the monks. And of course the doctor hasn't been, and he reveals he's been on that ship for six months so I would think that, and just in past episodes, that is about five months, three weeks, and six days more than the doctor needs to figure out a plan. But uh, he hasn't figured one out because he doesn't know where the source of the signal is. It's basically kind of like a cell phone signal, uh, and they have uh, cell phone antennas in the guise of all these really subtle statues. And as soon as the monks take took over, and it wasn't subtle at all, they decided to put statues at all of our monuments, and uh, those are basically cell phone towers. <clears throat> so after uh, the doctor tells Bill that this is all a big ruse and he, all the guards that were there are all with him too, they, uh, take, they go back, uh, again, not so subtly, they, the ship they're on, they just drive it right up onto the port and the doctor's laughing maniacally and then it cuts to uh, them going to the university because the doctor, having all that time, hasn't been able to figure out like what the monks, what the monks are doing to get this signal out, what the source of the signal is. So he needs help, and that's a great excuse to bring Missy in. So we finally get to see uh, the vault open, and we and we knew Missy was in there because he was talking to her. But we see Missy in there. Of course, it's bigger on the inside, and uh, she's playing the piano, looking very bored. And we get just a delicious Mel Go uh, Michelle Gomez. I said Mel. Sorry, it's my wife's name. Michelle Gomez scene uh and, she, and just everything she does is she is the best thing about this capaldi era uh she stands out she's even better than capaldi in my opinion but we get some great lines uh you know they ask for her help and she wants something back she wants what is it she wanted uh boots a particle accelerator a 3d printer and a pony which is what any master would ask for uh, of either sex and uh, the doctor kind of takes her to task, like, hey, if you're trying to be good, you don't ask for stuff in return. And uh, she has a great line of, uh, you know, I'm going to read it here because I don't want to butcher it. But uh, your version of good is not absolute. It's vain, arrogant, and sentimental. And if you think I'm going to be like that, then I'm going to be in here for a very long time with a great scene transition of her eyes kind of over the water. Um, but before that, real quick... Um, 
you know, she does make an argument that she is really playing it at, at being good. She reminds the doctor that she made a gun out of leaves. So she could walk out of there anytime she, she wants. So she is making a go of it, but it was a great point of like, you know, how subjective good is, you know. Um, and the doctor referenced that he's, uh, you know, when he needed the Missy's help, that I need somebody almost as smart as me. But, you know, in a lot of ways, I've always thought the master was kind of smarter than the doctor. Just, you know, he's she's got that whole evil thing going against her, you know. But I always kind of thought the master was, in certain aspects, a little smarter than the doctor. And especially since it's really obvious we're getting, uh, and I'm going to borrow this from Radio Times, we're getting a scorpion and the frog scenario here. Um, there's no way Missy's going to play good, especially, you know, when we have other versions of the, uh, master coming up later, which I cannot freaking wait for. So Missy has had experience with the monks before, and she pretty much knows, uh, everything that we know so far. Uh, but she also knows where the source of the signal is. And, uh, the doctor gets it out of her that it's the person who invited them in, which is Bill. And before Missy found that out, she's like, well, that's easy. If you know where the source is, just kill it. And uh, the doctor's all, we can't do that. And uh, we don't sacrifice people. And that's where the, uh, you know, your, your good is a arrogant and vain line comes in. Um, and then she also, as, as we find, uh, as she, she finds out that Bill is the source, she uh, plays a little Scott Joplin on her piano uh, and it just made me think automatically of the sting, which, uh, you know, made that music famous and it's a famous like grifter ruse movie. So I think there's a big hint right there that this is all a, a sting, a ruse, and this is just the big setup. And I think that's what this arc has been. It is been a setup for what's to come later and it's been pretty decent. There's been better two or three parters, uh, the whole reintroduction of the master being one of the best for example so uh you know I, oh and i love how missy uh when she was mentioning that she had experience with the monks before that she's she's gone on her own adventures and it's not all about you doctor but the thing is was was the master running around like saving planets i don't think so i think she more like maybe he's working with the monks and there's a lot of monk theories out there i think this might be one of those famous you know stephen moffat red herrings but um i will get into what i think uh the monks are at the end of my recap here um and also remember that uh you know the, the doctor is keeping missy out missing now keeping missy now and he has offered to do this before, uh, and last of the Time Lords, he offered to keep the Master, and the Master chose suicide over that. So I'm wondering, uh, maybe thousands of years is the change of heart, or is there something else going on? Which I believe there is. Um, you know, at, at this point, they kind of walk back in frustration because Missy wasn't much of a help other than, like, you need to kill Bill, which... Would have been a really good name of this episode, Kill Bill. Uh, I guess they couldn't use it. Um, but they, as, as they, wa they walk back in frustration, Bill kind of takes the doctor to task like, hey, why did you need me to do all this? You could have devised a plan on your own. And the doctor mentions that uh, he wanted her by his side. And he called it, he said the reason is, uh, you know, it's the safest place in the universe, which it could be. But I think there's more to that. I think he wanted her there. But uh, I, again, I'll give you hopefully uh, my little theory on Bill later, which might be very interesting um, to her mom and something I found out uh, after I watched this episode. Uh, so they hatch a plan to destroy the source instead of Bill. So there's a giant pyramid in the middle of London, and that's their base of operations. Um, for, you know, they, they have the soldiers with them. And they're kind of scouting it out. And then you hear that there is actually only 12 monks. The monks are, you know, using holograms or your brain to make it look like there's actually more than there is. So there's only 12. And that's a really interesting number. Now, Stephen Moffat uses that number a lot just because we're on the 12th Doctor. But wouldn't it be cool? Because, like, one of my theories is the monks might be Time Lords. And there is technically 12 previous Doctors out there, including the War Doctor, um, and we know that Time Lords go into that matrix 
uh, their minds go into that matrix. Remember, we saw you know uh, the, the Weeping Angels at the at the, uh, in Hellbent um, and uh, Cyberman and Daleks, and we even saw an image of David Tennant uh, and in a Time Lord robe. And and the only reason I thought that the monks might be Time Lords is these red robes, and also um, they look a lot like the veil from Heaven Sent which was related to the time Lords when the doctor had to break through that diamond thing to get, uh, to get to Gallifrey. So I, I think there's just tons of time Lord callbacks. And also when Bill and the doctor and Missy were talking and they were talking about, um, having to kill Bill, the background music was from the last of the time Lords. It was kind of the master theme that they use, especially when, uh, 10, was describing his origin when they have to when they take the kids uh, to look into the time vortex and see what happens. Some people go mad, some people run away, and uh, you know. So I think that th there was a heavy callback to that. So uh, the the doctor decides he's going to uh, mind meld with uh, what is, uh, for lack of a better term, the space jockey of the monks. They break into the pyramid. They have to have headphones on, and Bill repeating that this is all a lie because the signal's strongest in the pyramid. But once they get into the center, it's kind of like the eye of the storm and the signal stops. And after, you know, after a brief action sequence, uh, it does look like the monks could die. They shot and killed. Well, there was a monk laying on the ground they were using guns. So maybe the monks can die. So I don't know. That might blow my whole Time Lord theory or their Time Lord residue or something. So we have this space jockey sitting there, and I don't know if this is the real likeness of the monks. It still looks corpse-like, but it looked like an alien corpse. And the doctor tries to mind meld with it to flush out all the uh, monk signals, but uh, it fights back and it beats the doctor. And when he comes to, uh, Bill has tied him up, and she's decided to uh, to to meld with the space jockey monk herself. Um, and what would a Doctor Who season be without uh, a companion sacrifice? This is awfully soon for Bill. Oh, uh, we haven't known you very well. Sorry to see you go. So she starts mind melding with the space jockey monk. And, uh, of course, it ends with uh, conquering the bad guys with love, which uh, Stephen Moffat loves to do. And honestly, I love it when the bad guys get conquered with love. So she uses the uh, image of her imaginary mom to wipe out uh, the monk's signals to everybody, and it works. Uh, and we get to hear her voice. And that's where I want to bring up um, Rosie Jane, who plays her mom. I found out after I watched this episode and I was doing some notes for this podcast that she was in the Day of the Doctor as a Time Lord. Uh, there's an Instagram picture of her dressed up as a Time Lord, and there's a quick scene where she's like ducking out of the way of something. And uh, it really reminded me of when Ten saw his mom at the end of time. She was mute. She didn't say anything, but he was uh, he was seeing her at the end. And it just kind of called back to that. And wouldn't it be cool if uh, Bill's mom was a Time Lord and maybe still alive and on Gallifrey and maybe Bill is a Time Lord or Time Lady, whatever we call him now. Or maybe she, maybe Bill's mom is Susan, and maybe she's Susan's daughter. I know there was there was a lot of talk of Susan coming back. Um, I think there's a lot of timey wimey Tom Time Lord stuff going on here. I hope so. I think it'd be really cool. Another, you know, I, I think the season's mi biggest missed opportunity was Missy being in the vault. Wouldn't it be cool if we would have had like the Silence of the Ood? You know, where uh, we had the doctor going and talking to Missy and trying to help him solve, you know, find out, you know, I would, I would have connected the entire season and had him going in the end of every episode and trying to figure out what the connection was, you know, and it looks in that way, it would have been more convincing that Missy has gone good and is helping him because when she eventually turns bad, what she's going to do, it would have been way more shocking if she was in every episode. I don't know. That's something I thought would have been cool, but uh, you know, I doubt it's going to happen. So, especially speculation on the monks. Uh, what I actually think is they're probably nothing. They were just uh, a vehicle to get Missy in, to have a three-episode three arc. Um, but maybe it plants the seeds for something else. Um, they could be Time Lords. I know there's another uh, theory out there that they're Cybermen. No way. They're not Cybermen. Um, 
And another thing, you know, when once they the monks were defeated, they just took off and left. They were like, okay. Um, and Missy had mentioned that, you know, they do give up on planets and sometimes they just chalk it up to experience, but it just seemed like they gave up really quick. Um, so that I thought there was something about that. And, uh, you know, the human race just forgot about them. And that's the doctor said, we're just doomed to always repeat our mistakes. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, I guess I would equate it to what my wife says, uh, forgetting about your pregnancy pain or basically being just a guy and walking around life, you know, like an ostrich. Um, and, uh, I love, you know, he mentions that to Bill and Bill's all, well, that's just part of our charm. He's all, no, it isn't. Um, but what about the people who the monks killed? Like nobody's going to remember them. Did they never exist? I don't know. That was one hanging question out there. So, um. Yeah, I think there was a ton of callbacks to uh, the master episodes and the end of time and the last of the time, the last of the time lords in particular, and the sound of drums in particular. So I, I think they are setting up some big reveal. They did say the Doctor's regeneration was going to be different, uh, you know, than anything before. We are coming close to the time where they're going to announce the Doctor. I think the last time they announced uh, Peter Capaldi, I think it was. Uh, I want to say it was mid August, late August of 2012. So I think uh, sometime around Comic Con or afterwards, uh, they are going to announce who the new doctor is. And, you know, it's going to be exciting. Now, I know, uh, you know, John and I were discussing, we were kind of hoping this three issue arc would turn out to, to go through the rest of the season, but it's not going to happen. We're getting a Mark Gatiss episode next week. Um, I will, we will do a podcast on that. He is not my favorite. I know some of the English fans are not going to love me for that, but uh, I, I honestly, the Unquiet Dead was the only one I liked by him. Uh, then it's going to go into, I think, the last three tying into each other. For those three, uh, not the last two, like I said, for those three, we're going to do episodes at 5 p.m. on Saturday Pacific time. So we will be on time for that. So I also want to mention that if you comment, it puts you into running for a box of impossible things. And if you just look behind me, I have a whole room of this stuff and the box of impossible things is just stuff I pluck from here and there and give to you. Um, it's like loot crate, but better because it's cool old doctor who stuff. You definitely will get a Dalek. I include those in every single one. And the next one's going to have an eight inch Matt Smith action figure, which is very, it's Mego like it's very cool along with some other stuff. So you can find all of our podcasts and videos at nerdrotic.com. We also, uh, we are live on your YouTube right now, and this is the Nerdrotic channel. You can just search that through Google. We're also on iTunes. You can, you can, I can't talk. You can subscribe to us on iTunes by just searching Nerdrotic and please comment questions, anything. We'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe. Uh, we also do a lot of other podcasts right now. We're doing American Gods. That's kind of our biggest hit. And if you go and watch that one and comment, that can enter you into winning an Amazon gift card. And we're going to start giving those away for all of our podcasts. Now, if you don't like any of the shows we do a rundown on, we do a, what's our flagship podcast, which we're up to episode 100. We'll recover all the latest news, all the trailers of everything nerd, real news about fake stuff. You will love it. So check us out. That's mainly on nerdrotic.com and iTunes. I sometimes throw them up on the YouTube channel, but not often. Uh, this is mainly for TV recaps. So I will be back next Saturday. I will be back with, with Doctor Who. I will be back later tonight for American Gods. And I also wanted to announce that if you're a Preacher fan, uh, Preacher is going to be in about three weeks, and we will be doing Preacher. So... Thanks for watching, and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Bye, Whovians.